Hi, my name is Allie. Um, so in this passage, it discusses many things about how music shapes the Appalachian area. There are many values conveyed through the music produced in the Appalachian area, such as moonshine and violence and on the opposite scale of things, family solidarity and then a simple life. At the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century, um, English and Scottish ballads in the Southern Hills were discovered. This placed the idea that the Southern Mountains and belief that that region were, uh, are unchanging. <clears throat> um, a British lore. The movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? is a good example of misinterpretation of mountain music and different values in the region. Um, there was only one singer on that soundtrack for that movie that was actually even from the Appalachian area. However, there is no such thing as Appalachian music because music made by people from this region has a tendency to be very diverse, including influences from many ethnic groups, interaction of cities and rural areas, and the varying economic patterns. Ballads in this region were encouraged by school teachers and was mainly private, um, like not public. Uh, dancing, however, was more of a communal activity. Um, they would throw big things called frolics, which were dances for the community that were house raisings, corn shuckings, beans, stringings, quilting, parties, syrup making, fresh fries, weddings, Christmas time, or just for fun. Um, music was also used to j liven up just about anything in this area. Like, for instance, even church services. Cecil Sharp was a man that adventured to many places because he was aware that the old ballads were being flooded by more modern folk music. This traditional ballad, ballads he saw out for were very rare. He wanted wealth from his discoveries and to write sheet music of the ballads that he found. But he was ignoring some, he was ignoring a lot of the other music that was help, actually helping shape the Appalachian area because he wanted to find like these specific ones. Um, radio stations were emerging from all over the Appalachian area, like in Asheville, Wheeling, Knoxville, several other cities. Uh, the most historic venue venture of findings, these artists came in late July, 1927, when producer Ralph Peer took a Victor recording crew to Bristol to a city, um, out outside of Tennessee and Virginia. The resulting Bristol sessions did not mark the birth country of music where they are observers who would argue that. However, they were they were what caused the preservation of the music from 19 different acts on 76 different recordings introduced the Jimmy Rogers and Carter family, which was a very popular country artist who actually relocated to Asheville. Um, many mountain musicians became fascinated with the blues and also began to merge with mount, like the blues kind of tied together with mountain music. They would use um, fiddles and stuff. So it wasn't that typical melancholy feel, but it was a more bluesy and toned down version. Uh, by the end of the 1920s, it had been presented with two contending versions of Appalachian music that fashioned the commercial hillbillies on the radio, recording stage shows and so on. So that conveyed the apostles of Cecil Sharp and Sharp in books, concerts, recitals, and folk festivals. Uh, musicians definitely helped characterize the Appalachian Mountain re region as a life that is down to earth and simple. Uh, the certain musicians who were stage performers would have to choose who they wanted to embody with what their values were as well. Uh, they knew what the allure of the Appalachian imagery, whether that be positive or negative, was. Um, many people in America think that 
when thinking of the word Appalachian and mountains gives a little bit of romantic mystical connotation to it um just especially in terms of like music there are certain times where you think about the Appalachian area and it's kind of like a negative connotation but there are also times where you think of something absolutely beautiful and stunning um and I think that music helps convey that uh the basis of Appalachian music links us and ties everyone to this mystical land that is known as simplicity and honesty. Um, now knowing, so my questions are now knowing the variety of Appalachian music from this chapter, what specific variation do you believe could have had the most influence in the Appalachian region? Um, and why do you think Sharp ignored all the other kinds of music on his venture whenever he went to go find all those ballads? Anyway, have a good day, night, whatever it is. Bye.